good afternoon from the Epcot parking lot. We are here today for multiple reasons. Number one, they opened up the new tram stop over here at the front entrance. Number two, they have a cheese trail here for Food and Wine Festival that I'm excited to try all the different cheesy things and you get a free slice of cheesecake if you complete the whole thing. And I wanted to see Epcot forever again. And I think that there is holiday merchandise like Christmas merchandise here at Epcot that we'll be able to see. So. Let's go inside and have a look around and see what we can see. So there it is. This was all behind construction walls before and now it's wide open. So this is where the tram stop is now. It used to be up closer up underneath the monorail beam there, but now it's out here. So it's not really a savings of time. You can see a lot of people are just walking in. So like if you got on the tram there, it would be kind of silly to ride it because you ride it out to the end of the parking lot and then back and then just get let off right over here. I feel like it's pretty interesting to walk into Epcot now. Of course, the walls are still here, but because the Leave a Legacy monoliths are not there, it doesn't draw your attention away from the Seas Pavilion over there. That's Living Seas. And I didn't ever notice it before because I was too focused on going in and Spaceship Earth and the monoliths and everything. Pretty interesting. All right, we need to find a book for Food and Wine Festival. There it is, a Food and Wine Festival passport. I did also want to say that the new entrance, the security, is vastly improved. Many more tables and many more metal detectors. So the whole reason we want a book is because towards the end here, we've got Emile's Fromage Montage, and that is the cheese trail. We have to get all five of these different cheese dishes, and then when we're done, we get this complimentary cheesecake, and we get a stamp at each booth after we try each one of these things. So the first one we're gonna try, Impossible Cottage Pie at Earth Eats. Oh, no line for Spaceship Earth, but as we turn to our right here from Spaceship Earth, there is a opening over here. I don't know if they just took down trees or if they took down a building, but we can see all the way over to the land pavilion back there. So we're back here by the reverse waterfall outside of the Imagination Pavilion, and we are headed to our very first stop on our cheese trail. It's over here in the Next Eats section. The Next Eats section is just a section of maybe like three or four different booths we're going to Earth Eats inside of the Next Eats section. Here it is, and we're gonna get the Impossible Cottage Pie, and you see it's got a little cheese symbol next to it. That's saying that it's on the cheese trail. And this is actually a vegetarian. Oh, mozzarella. Is that, that's not vegetarian though, right? Or not vegan, just vegetarian. And there's my first dish. This is the vegetarian cottage pie made with Impossible Crumbles. Looks actually really good. Just as a little bit of a pro tip, that little spot over there is too low for you to eat anything off of. I felt like I was leaning way over. So I moved over to a trash can. I'm gonna give it a try here on camera. I've tried this before and I didn't, I feel like I liked it, it okay. Like it was just fine. I like the peas in it though. The peas are delicious. I wish that it was actual meat, but for a vegetarian dish, it's really good. So with that shepherd's pie, they also sell a burger at that same booth. That's an impossible burger, so it's a vegetarian burger. But I feel like what they did is they just took the burger, cooked it, then plopped it in the bottom of that ramekin, and then like put mashed potatoes and peas and stuff on top of it, which is kind of silly, but it did, it, if they had mixed the peas in with the quote unquote meat, it wouldn't have tasted as good as it did because it was like solid chunks of meat, quote unquote meat. All right, we're off to the next booth. Ooh, it's a windy night. One thing that I think is kind of silly that they don't do in this book is they don't have a map telling you where anything is. So our next booth that we're headed to is the cheese studio. And because I've been here before, I know that we're going over there to the cheese studio and we're gonna get the black pepper borson souffle, which actually sounds delicious. Here we are over at the cheese studio. And we're getting the black pepper borson souffle with fig marmalade, $5. The first dish was also $5. The cottage pie so it seems like they're staying along the same price point i'm hoping that every dish that we try today will just be an even five dollars make it easy and you can see they've got the little cheese symbol next to it i also have a picture of it too oh and i meant to show you my stamp that i got at the first booth it's kind of like when i was buying it when i told them my order then they put the stamp in there not after i got it so if you guys are wondering where you get the stamp from it's right when you're paying for it i do feel like i got way more food with my cottage pie than i got with this souffle no, let's give it a try. I got a little bit of everything. I got some fig jam, I got some greens, then I got the, the souffle. The fig jam definitely overpowers everything. So let me try, oh, there's bubbles coming at me. Let me try something that doesn't have any fig jam on it, just the souffle. It's interesting. It's not the best thing I've ever had, but it's not terrible. I don't know. I probably wouldn't order this again. Now that I've finished that whole souffle, it was pretty good. I wish that it was a little bit more buttery. Like I wish there was a little bit more 
cheese, I guess. More some sort of cream or butter or cheese, more of that in there. It was a little bit too bready for me. It wasn't dry. And I, do, I, I would have gotten it without the fig jam the next time. Not terrible, but like I said, I probably won't order it again. On to the next thing, which I know that I'll like. Some nice stinky cheese from the Alps. So over to the Alps for some warm raclette cheese. And then over to Germany, so... Oh, monorail! So because we're headed that way to the Alps, which is outside of the Norway pavilion, and then we'll go over to Germany and then over to Brazil, and then we'll be done. We'll, we'll have completed the cheese trail. So we're, we're like almost halfway done. Still waiting for them to finish this bathroom. Looks like they just started doing stucco on it. So maybe soon-ish. Now we're nearly certain that this is a bathroom because where the old bathrooms are, they've torn it out. This is the direction that we're headed over towards, this is the Mexico Pavilion. We've actually done tours of all of the pavilions in Epcot so you guys can find your way around more easily. And we'll put links to a playlist in the description down below so you guys can watch all of the different pavilions in Epcot and what they have to offer. Over here by the Norway Pavilion, we're headed in line for the Alps because we're looking for the warm raclette. And it is, it's $5. We're on a roll. So far, three dishes, $5 a piece. There's my warm raclette cheese. And they actually pull this off the block and put it over top of the potatoes. The bread looks a little bit thinner than it did when we came for the preview uh, that I can remember. There is a lot of cheese on there though. And I'm actually next to nine dragons right now. And this used to be the smoking section. And now it's just kind of wide open. There is a gate to backstage back here, but there's just lots of open room back here. It's nice. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a beautiful amount of stringy, stringy, melty, cheesy goodness. All right, I've got a bite that is a potato and the cheese. Let's see if it's as good as I remember it being. It is, that's a delicious cheese. Mmm, man, that's a good cheese. I'd happily pay $5 for this again. So far, three cheese, dis three cheese dishes down, but all three were fairly tasty. Especially this cheese. This cheese is really good. I feel like we're blazing through this cheese trail. We only got two left. And this is a lot easier than the cookie trail, which I did during last Christmas. And we'll put a link to that in the description down below. So you guys can see how hard it was to do a sweet cookie trail where I had to eat five cookies. It's easier to eat five food and wine festival savory dishes. So up next, we've got Germany. And everybody made fun of me for the way that I pronounced this last time. Chicken noodling. Chicken noodling. All right, let's go give it a try. Look at this sunset that's going on though as we pass through China. Also, I need to start scoping out spots to watch Epcot Forever tonight. Should be the same good spots everywhere around all of World Showcase Lagoon, just like it was for Illuminations. So just before we get into the actual Germany Pavilion, off to the side over here is the Germany booth for food and wine. And that's where we're headed to. Ooh, it looks like we're gonna save a little bit of money in Germany. It's only $4.25. Pasta gratin with ham, onions, and cheese. Yes, please. Oh yeah, this looks awesome. I'm pretty excited for this. This is just like cheesy potatoes with ham and onions, right? This sounds so delicious. Let's give this chicken noodle in a try. That's pretty good. I think I said it was cheesy potatoes. It's not, it's like cheesy noodles. The ham is very flavorful, very onion flavored, and very cheesy. I like it. Everything is good so far. This is a good trail. The cheese trail is a good trail. Now that I've gotten that entire chicken noodle in, in me, Delicious. The bottom was burnt. I love burnt cheese. Burnt cheese. I shouldn't say burnt. It wasn't burnt. It was like browned. Just below burnt. And I love that flavor with cheese. And that made it so good. I would eat that again. I wish it had a little bit less onions in it, but I understand like that's just the, the dish. Like it's it's gratin, uh, cheese, ham, onions. It's just the way it is. But I would make it without the onions because I think it would be so good without the onions. Off to Brazil we go for some Brazilian cheese bread. What a great way to end out the cheese trail. This was an easy, I wouldn't even call this a challenge. This was just a delicious night out. Now we are headed through the crowd over past Italy, and then we're gonna pass by the America Pavilion, which there is an Eat to the Beat concert going on right now. I don't know who's playing, but we will find out as we get closer. Just missed the end of the show, but it was Sheila E that is playing at the Eat to the Beat concert series tonight. Just heading through Japan, we're almost to where we're getting the cheese bread in Brazil. And now we're passing through Morocco. This seems to be the most countries that we've had to go in between samples to get to Brazil for the final cheese dish. The very last thing that we need is this Brazilian cheese bread. So everything wasn't $5. We did pretty good. This one's only $4.50. And I'm most excited about this one because I've had this before. 
and it is delicious. There's my Brazilian cheese bread, and it looks delicious. Ooh, they're like stuck together. Ooh, ooh, okay, here we go. They're kind of flat though, aren't they? That's just delicious. It's just like cheese infused bread, melty, soft. It's like a yeast roll, almost like a cheese pancake, almost, because it's flat. This is really good. Wow. I want to eat this all the time. And now, and now I get a cheesecake and I have to go get up to Shimmering Sips, sort of over by Canada, to get that. So I'm going to finish up this cheese bread and go over and get my free cheesecake. It's like, this is the best part. This was the best cheese dish that there was, is this cheese bread. All right, we're doing that. Now we're headed through the UK pavilion, headed towards the Canada pavilion, and we're gonna go just past the Canada pavilion. We're back at the entrance to World Showcase. You can see Spaceship Earth peeking through the trees right there. We're going to this booth called Shimmering Sips. We're gonna get a cheesecake. I'll be interested to find out what kind of cheesecake it is because the only cheesecake I'm seeing is this cheesecake trio and I don't think that that's it. I bet you it's just one of these little tiny pieces of cheesecake. Well, that's actually a lot bigger and a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Like here's here's my hand, just to give you guys a perspective of how big it is. I got a pretty big hand though, so I, I don't know. This is uh, probably about two and a half inches. In, in diameter, I don't know. It looks pretty good. I don't know what any of the flavors are because there was no descriptors of it. So we'll just have to give it a try. I think it's probably just regular old cheesecake. They call this the completer cheesecake. That's pretty good. It's, it's just a normal old cheesecake. I'm gonna try to get some of this like topping onto it and see what this topping tastes like. Okay, with these little little crisper balls and stuff like that. That's really good. I do like it. The, the crust is very crumbly and a little bit dry, but for the most part, it's a delicious cheesecake for a free cheesecake. I mean, I paid for it with all the other cheese things around here, but I mean, I guess if you weren't doing the cheese trail, yeah, I'm gonna call this a free cheesecake. This was a free cheesecake, so it was good. Ooh, I just found out that there are pineapples on it and now it is 3,000 times better. The pineapples really make the cheesecake. It's a pretty darn yellow cheesecake too. It almost has a key lime flavor because of the pineapples and the cheesecake mixed together. Kind of give it like a, a sour, sweet lime flavor. But it is, it's just pineapples and cheesecake. Wow, this is good and it's like an accomplishment. This was way easier to complete than the cookie trail, for sure. Now that we're all done with our cheese trail, let's take a stop inside of Mouse Gear, see if they've got any holiday merchandise for Christmas. First thing that we see is this case with some of the designer ears in them. This is the Ashley Eckstein Princess Leia ears. These are the Harvey's ears, right? And these are the Jared Mayama Hipster Mickey ears. And those are $58, and this is the Shag ear hat. I believe this is also $58. For $24.99, they have this. This is like a meme on a shirt, right? Where it's like expectation versus reality. Ooh, so much Disney Christmas merch. Like they got a candy cane spirit jersey. Probably the same price as every spirit jersey. I think that's $65. Look at this snowman hat for $34.99. I love that it's flashing and it lights up. How much fun is that? $29.99 for this mouse ear headband. These are fun. For $39.99, you got a Mickey Mouse sequin peppermint type shirt, but this is not a reversible sequin like a lot of their new stuff is. They're just one-way sequins. $54.99 for this glittery statue. What do you call this? Figurine? I like how glittery they are. For $44.99, these are like snow globes without the water in them. They look like Christmas trees. They're called pedestal domes. Never seen anything like that before in my life. This is the advanced Christmas greeting. Happy Merry Joy! This is a sweater, sweatshirt for $49.99. I wish you guys a Happy Merry Joy. Oh, I think I was showing you the kids spirit jersey before that was green. This is the adult one that is black and it looks like a candy cane. What's on the front? Same thing. It's like a candy cane Mickey Mouse Santa. For $29.99, they've got a Mickey and Minnie gingerbread cookie mouse headband with like a little piece of candy in the center. This is interesting. I like it though. Seems like it's a little bit better quality. Well, maybe not. 
was going to say it seemed like it was better quality than their normal ear headbands, but about the same. I kind of look at these stitches always, and the stitches are not always entirely straight. They also have a plaid spiritual. Whoa! Look at this one. It's gigantic. It's down the whole arm and everything. That's a really giantly worded spirit jersey. Holy cow, this is the biggest words yet. Wow. For $64.99, they've got these light up ugly sweaters. I feel like I like this one a little bit better because it's like the colors of the lights are more fun. It's red and green, whereas this one's got some green and white. I like this black one a little bit better. That's cool. Oh, you guys remember around... Oh, this one, okay, so for Halloween, they had the Headless Horseman one, or like the Scarecrow one, where you put a cookie in the top. This one, you don't put a cookie in the top, it just has a, just like a topper on it. And it is a, uh, like a hot chocolate, $24.99 for a hot chocolate mug. $34.99 for this Main Street Candy Cane Sweet Treats shirt. Man, all of these different shirts, you know what it has me thinking. Christmas is starting now. So for $54.99, they've got one of the flip-up sequins uh -huh. Mickey Mouse sweatshirts. This is like a light sweater. It's harder to do. These are some tight sequins. That's pretty neat because it almost looks like it blends in with the gray color because it switches to silver. I like this one. It's fun. $54.99 for this chip nutcracker. That's amazing. For $29.99, we've got this flannel Mickey ear Santa hat. A little bit lighter here, so it won't be as hot. This part will still be hot, but this part won't be as hot as it has been in years past. Fittingly, right next to all the Christmas stuff is some Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. I like this one, Mickey's Main Street Tree Farm. This is just a flannel shirt, and I believe it is $59.99. How fun is this? Yes, I like this one. So this is a cut above the rest. Let me just check the price one last time. Make sure that I'm telling you the correct price. $59.99. For $39.99, they have a matching light-up sign that goes with the flannel shirt. Wow, these are, this is like, I'm liking all this Christmassy merch. There definitely is a lot more Christmas merch. I'll be showing you guys some more of it the next time that we come, for sure. Got some frosted pretzels here, too. $8.50. Some expensive pretzels. For $140, they have a Christmas train set. It's the Holiday Express. Oh, it's got a skating car. Look at how fun that is. All right, now that we've seen some of the holiday merch, let's head out and get a spot for Epcot Forever. I'm excited to watch this show again. I really liked it the first time that I watched it and the music got to me, so I can't wait to feel that same feeling again. I think we found a pretty good spot. I know that there are these gondola poles here because we're over in Italy, but everything's for the most part up in the air, and then we should be able to see the little kites go by, no problem. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Not terrible. We just noticed a little behind the scenes action. Hopefully this shows up on camera, but there's a box out there in the water, and that's where one of the jet skis is. You can kind of see a guy sitting right next to a jet ski out there, waiting for his cue to take off and trail some magical kites behind him.
So uh, Epcot Forever is a fantastic fireworks show. I really enjoy it. It does bring back some childhood feels for me though. So I have like an emotional connection to the fireworks show because the songs are from my childhood. So I don't know, I enjoy it. It's a good fireworks show. I think I like uh, Epcot Forever better than Illuminations. Sorry. I, don't, I hope that doesn't upset too many people. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Epcot to try the cheese trail, which everything on it was delicious. I really like that they're doing these sort of like food trails. It's like a food challenge. You're going to go and eat five different things and then you get what's called a completer item. During the cookie trail, it was a completer cookie. For this, it was a completer cheesecake. But I kind of want to do it again. Like, I don't, I'd do it more than once. And then the holiday merch was fantastic. I cannot wait for Christmas because... Christmas is starting now, because we saw that. All the merch is there. That means that it's happening. It's Christmas. Christmas is starting now. And then uh, Epcot Forever was fantastic. I really do like that fireworks show. The new entrance over here at Epcot, amazing, easy to do. I think now, and we'll have to test this out, but from the looks of it, it seems that you, if you're coming from Magic Kingdom on the monorail, if you're coming from Transportation and Ticket Center on the monorail, you don't have to go through security again when you get here to Epcot. So that's a good thing. That means that you only have to go through security once. Before the new entrance opened, you would go through security to get into the Ticket and Transportation Center, get on a monorail, get over here to Epcot, and then go through security again. I believe that has changed now because of the way that it looks. It looks like the exit from the monorail comes in on the other side of security here at Epcot. So that is a good addition. All in all, a fantastic day out here. So with that being said, we are off. We will see you guys tomorrow. Hi, I'm Jake from Florida. And that being said, now it's time to pay the price.